Thanks for listening to the Ages of Rock podcast. If you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and most importantly, tell all your friends. Remember, you're never too old to rock. Until the next episode, peace out, folks. Here last week, so we already did 327. This is 328. Oh, all right, 328. <laughs> so you didn't look at your handy dandy new notebook. So I didn't. We want to make sure that Mark. We want to know that when Mark, you know, people are looking for his his interview, it'll be the right one. So. Yeah, we'll put all it up right. as the right one. You'll be good. you'll be happy about there that. You go. That's for sure. <laughs> so how you doing, man? I'm I'm doing fantastic. Just uh, chilling in my office and uh, talking to you guys. Nice. So that's a, that's a pretty nice little office you got there. There's uh, some yeah. pretty cool memorabilia there. Yeah, I got my uh, my tour jackets there. I got some, you know, some gold records all over the place and some special photos that mean stuff to me. And I have my my kids uh, kiss toy a guitar that the the band signed back when it was like three years old, like 30 years ago or something, you know, or actually 27 <laughs> years ago. Nice. But uh, yeah. So I have all my special little keepsakes hanging up. Make me feel good. Cool. You could, when you're ready to retire, you probably sell that to some kiss geek that will buy it for $3 billion. <laughs> 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 if you, if you, if that ever get interest you in any way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, never know. you never know. You never know. You never know, man. You've got a, um, so you've got a really cool book out. Um, uh, the decade that rocked is really cool. Um, I've re- I've kind of thumbed through it a little bit and uh, really interesting stuff. But I was at your um, actually when you did your uh, book signing and um, in Nashville, I was happened to just kind of be cruising through, decided to stop at Bowie's um, just to see what was going on. Ran into Anthony Quarter and he goes, man, you ought to come to this gig thing we got going on tonight. So <laughs> I showed up and didn't realize it was your uh, book signing thing. So that's pretty. It was really cool. It was a good, good evening. Yeah, it was fun. We started uh, during the day. I did a little uh, kind of a keynote speaking thing over at Gibson, you know, right uh, at the headquarters over there and did a little slideshow, had a little gallery going on and did a book signing there. And then I took it over to Bowie's uh, afterwards to, uh, you know, a little after party. Yeah, it looks like you were having a little a little family reunion or a neighborhood reunion. If I'm if I remember right, there were some guys there that live close to you and stuff like that it was pretty cool. So, yeah, yep. Yeah. I, I actually I saw Scott McGee there. I haven't seen him for ages, so we kind of reconnected. So that was fun. Yeah, looked like a blast. So, what got you started in photography? What was the, what was the, the the catch, the hook? Uh, just kind of being part of uh, something that you know made me feel feel good. You know, like people that like the same music that I like. So uh, it was I, I was kind of going to concerts and that made me feel good. And then when I actually started taking photographs, it was just like a step closer of like kind of really being part of it and, and feeling, uh, you know, feeling a little special, you know, because I kind of took something, took something that uh, kind of makes people feel, you know, real good about, you know, so that's, that's why I started taking pictures, started giving them to my friends. Then I started selling them and it kind of just kind of took off from there cool so when you first started out where were you located at at this point when you were taking all these photos i mean uh matawan new jersey it's uh, about an hour out of the city maybe 45 minutes so i used to take trains to new york city and uh, sneak on sneak in the concert with my cameras and uh, stay up all night and then sell them the next day out of my high school locker (laughs) (laughs) nice that's what I'm saying. If you were you know, like, say, if you lived where we were at, you know, you get the concert every once in a while. <laughs> Take a couple uh, pictures. Yeah, the, the tri-state area. We had Philadelphia, Connecticut, yeah, you, you uh, New York everything. City, New York. So there was like tons of tons of uh, concerts. So I would I would shoot a lot at Convention Hall in Asbury. That's when I first shot Van Halen in '79. Wow. And uh, you know, there was Giant Stadium. You know, it's just tons of places. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. Wow. What was the, what was the first, um, major show that you shot or major artist? Uh, well, <clears throat> well, sneaking in my first concert that I snuck into with my camera was Elton John over at Madison oh. Square Garden. I mean, I was 14. Uh, I just, I, it, there's a small photo in the book cause I wanted to, you know, put something in there that, that was from that show. 
But then the next day uh, or the next year, I went to see Eric Clapton and I stuck my cam camera in again. And, and uh, so that was, you know, pretty cool. But the first, first big rock star that I shot, like outside of just live was, uh, I would say, um, uh, Peter Frampton in 79. Uh, even though I did shoot uh, probably the same year I shot Van Halen backstage in 79. Um, but yeah, there's so many concerts yeah, I went to and it's between 1976 and 77 when I was sneaking in and selling my pictures like Peter Frampton and uh, Jethro Tull, I'm just like a Palmer, Aerosmith, Kiss, Led Zeppelin. So these are all, these are all bands that I kind of sunk my teeth into to, uh, you know, and sold my photographs and until that fateful day at a kiss concert that I got arrested for selling my pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Not by Gene, but by one of his, his <laughs> well, somebody were, else, huh? by the yeah, cops. Huh? And they were cracking down. I mean, not all yeah. the time. Uh, like some bands didn't really care. They just let us go. Uh, but I was, it was mostly the shirt sellers, but I was in the paddy wagon with all the shirt sellers and uh, you know, they just, they want to just clean it up. So every once in a while, but you know, you had to run from once in a while. I didn't, I didn't run fast enough that day. And, uh, <laughs> And, but that really was a fateful day for me because that's when I got arrested and I went to Circus Magazine the next day. Just looked at, looked in the magazine. I saw uh, the address was in New York. So I just hopped on the same train, went to the office and it was good timing. The secretary took a liking to me and she had me wait a few hours, but I patiently waited and saw the art director and actually the owner of the magazine, Jerry Rothberg. And they just kind of saw this kid, you know, uh, just getting arrested. I told them my whole story and they basically told me, you know, do this and do that. And they use this film. They told me to use Kodachrome, use a flash and come back when you think you have some good photos. And so I took it to heart. And about four or five months later, uh, Aerosmith was playing at giant stadium, uh, with Ted Nugent. And I had some really good photos and I submitted them. And a couple months later, it's not, was an instant, you know, like it is today, but I actually had to wait a couple months to appear in a magazine. It was a centerfold of Steven Tyler. And then the ball just started rolling. Wow. So, so your first major picture was a centerfold of Steven Tyler. That's, that's yeah. pretty damn good. <laughs> pretty and that awesome. was a, and that was a deal where you were sneaking in your camera too, at that point. Yeah. Still yet, right. Uh -huh. yeah. So when did, so when did that, so once you got that put, or put in the magazine at that point, did you get credentials where you could go in with a camera did that end your sneaking things in or when did that happen yeah i mean i still whenever i, I couldn't get a photo pass because i was still kind of a rookie here you know uh sure i would still sneak in but i would use the circus name to uh get photo passes they let me do it you know it's because i was getting in the magazine every issue and then one time you know uh, they asked me to shoot van halen and uh on assignment so uh the way that goes is they only pay you like they only paid one hundred twenty five dollars plus expenses, but they get to own the photos. And I didn't care. I just wanted to get in the magazine <clears throat> so uh, and get a name for myself. So I did that for a while. Luckily, when uh, they closed shop, Jerry called me up and gave me got me gave me the photos back, which was I'm oh, very, that's very cool. Thankful of that. So, wow. Uh, but, you know, when you start out, you just you just want to get a name for yourself. So you're going to say yes to everything. Uh, and then, uh, once you get a little success, then you can get a little, you know, you know, you can put some rules down on some guidelines and, and make, try to make a serious business out of it, which is what I did. So it's all, first, all learning steps. And yeah, when you're first starting out though, I mean that, that, I know it's not a lot of money, but you're hanging around with Van Halen for a day, you know, <laughs> or an evening yeah, or whatever it is. Yeah, it's I mean, like one, that would be, that'd be like you to keep your 125. I'm just going <laughs> to hang around and take some pictures, you know, yeah, that would yeah. Be the <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I didn't really care about the money, just, you know, right, of right. You get paid, but I just used the money to get filmed because back then, I always say back then, you know, <laughs> before, pre, pre digital, you know, PD, right. I call it, uh, we had to buy film and, you know, it costs like 50 bucks for to buy it and to process it, you know, it costs some money. And there's only 36 frames in a, in a roll. So you had to choose your moments carefully. Uh, unlike today where you can just kind of go crazy and you spend more time editing the photos than taking them. But you know, there's pros and cons to both. Yeah. When did, so when did you make the switch 
to did you did are you still doing film are you still doing film any film work no, at all no no i was no. working uh, when that that happened uh digital happened it wasn't best quality at the time so i kind of waited till it caught up and then i you know at the time i was working for a german magazine called bravo which was a weekly big big magazine that they shot a lot of the pop stars rock stars and it was a weekly and i had a i used to have to like take the photos develop them process them and then you know sign the custom forms and send them so by the time they got it, it was like it could be a week and then they get held up so it was a real process so once the digital came they insisted on shooting digital because then you can just shoot it right over so that was really the catalyst for me to uh switch over and uh so i learned pretty quick on that are you shooting anything now on film still or is no. it strict no 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 i didn't i didn't know if you still had that that love of the film that you know no it's a it's a tool you know you make it look i always mute the colors so it doesn't look like you know so did so digital so everyone has their own look to it i i like to uh you know i love digital you know you get to take it, look at it, and then process, you know, look, go home and edit it and post it. It's pretty, pretty awesome. Pretty. Yeah. It's pretty quick. I work in radiology actually. So it's, we do similar stuff. We used film for years and photo, you know, process things just like we do for regular, you know, for photo film, but oh, um, yeah. you know, when it went digital um, you know, same thing, you know, pictures are instantaneous image quality is a lot better. Mm -hmm. feels a lot better. Um, but, you know, being one of those guys that did film for a long time, it was, I, I kind of miss it. <laughs> I haven't done any of it for a long, long time. I'm, I'm pushing papers more than anything now. But um, it's just interesting how that has changed so much, you know, in, in both those, you know, both fields. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. Very interesting. Is there anybody that you um, really, really were excited about getting to, to, to shoot or... Um, was the kind of the holy grail for you uh, or have you, have you shot them yet? Maybe that's there. Maybe that's the right question. I, I mean, I guess all the bands that I shot in the eighties, you know, that I never thought I would ever be shooting would be like bands like Ozzy. And uh, I, I mean, most of the other bands were just kind of growing up, growing when I was growing. So all those mm -hmm. bands that turned out to be huge, like Bon Jovi, I was shot when he was 18. You know, Motley Crue, I shot in 82 and the first album, I gave them their first national layout. Um, wow. But, uh, you know, bands like ACDC, Judas Priest, I, I liked. So I, I was excited to start working with them. Uh, but, you know, I, I came from the 70s and I was excited to, you know, like Led Zeppelin was a favorite band. I, I guess you could say Aerosmith was definitely like a band that was one of my faves and then the personalities of those guys are amazing and that's one band i always wished to work for and i i did in, in, in an early age really i worked with joe and steven in the like in 1980 when they split and they went their separate ways so i got to know both of them really well when they were kind of on their down spiral and then when they started getting up again i you know, i was you know i was back in the saddle with them uh for a short time you have to read the book to get the full story on that one so this is a there's a whole story on the Aerosmith connection, <clears throat> but, um, but, you know, bands like, you know, the, like the Stones or Zeppelin uh, Queen, these are, those are bands that I wish I would have like toured with or hung with and mm -hmm. all that, you know, but I kind of, yeah. I miss that, uh, that growing uh, part. And unfortunately I, I never really shot any of those bands besides a, a lot of live shots, which, um, uh, but, you know, there was uh, the photographers that captured that decade. Uh, I always feel like each decade has like three solid photographers that kind of like sweep it, you know, and, you know, the seventies was, I feel like it was like Mick Rock, Lynn Goldsmith and Bob Gruen. I mean, there was tons more. Uh, and, you know, of course in the eighties, it was me, Niels, Lozauer and Ross Halfin who kind of just kind of, you know, wiped it up. And then there was, I, I believe in the eighties, there was, a lot more photographers because everyone wanted there. Everyone was fans and everyone wanted to do it. Unlike the seventies where there was like a good, a good solid handful, if not two where in the eighties because of all the magazines and, you know, all the uh, publicity that they were going for and the MTV exposure kind of gave an open tour to anyone that really wanted to be a photographer that loved that music. So there was a lot of photographers like that. Too. 
Interesting. So, so Mark, with the with the you know how you know everything goes through a, a cycle, you know, and, and the magazines, you know, something that you know Bill and I and you, I'm sure, you know, when we were kids to teenagers i mean that's where you got all your information you know we didn't have the internet we didn't have any you, know, you read it in a magazine uh, the news was already three months old at that point <laughs> <'cause, you know? laughs> but the thing is i mean so the for, you know so now so the, the all the stuff you're taking now is basically going on the internet now it's not really yeah. it's, i mean there's not a lot of mag i mean there's still a few magazines that are putting stuff out but your bulk of it goes to the internet, to certain websites, I guess, and, and stuff like that. So it's changed from a magazine to a website, basically. Yeah, what I what I do with my photos, um, I sell my archives to you know anyone that wants them. You know the magazines. There's a lot of those magazines. It's in, uh, but uh, as far as uh, uh, my new photo shoots and my new things that I do, because I just shoot because I love doing it. Um, is I post it to help my brand, you know, I, and now I'm, uh, I have this, a site called rock scene magazine that I'm, it, it kind of before I kind of stopped it when COVID happened, but I'm starting to kick it back in. I actually just did a post where I shot, um, Jeff Peck and, uh, Johnny Depp. And I, I'm kind of making like the old style covers of rock scene from the seventies. Cool. Um, and I'm just kind of, displaying galleries it's not like what cream did where they're doing stories and trying to get new bands and this and that i'm just going with bands that i like to cover bands that i have history with and also bringing other photographers in that also have their rock scene you know as long as it's rock it could be a new band it could be a classic band uh it's just a just a outlet for you know photographers that want to get good photography out there you know so Right. I, I'm encouraging young people, uh, old people, it doesn't matter what, how old you are, to shoot and to edit and to submit and to uh, create their own rock scene page on on my on the full Roxy magazine. So it's in development yeah. now. You can see the cover of the, the page, uh, uh, not the page, the, um, the Beck um, uh, Johnny Depp issue. And right. I'll be posting more photographs, uh, you know, as well. Um, but, uh, you know, just a place to put it and to, uh, create, uh, the magazine feel of what we had before. And that's cool that you're including other need. people yeah. to do that. I mean, it's like, you, it's kind of like, a I'm just like another website. It's, it, you want know, I'm trying to, what's that thing that the people like the recipes and stuff that people put in is like blogs Reddit, and things like, like Reddit that. and stuff like that. Yeah. It, it almost becomes something like that because like I said, people, other people trying to do the same thing you're doing and. You know, yeah, well, I'm cool. trying to, and, and the thing that inspired is inspiring now is uh, uh, I started my first photo workshop. I did it at Monsters on the Mountain a couple months ago, right. and there's a lot of bands from the '80s, friends of mine. I figured, all right, this is a good one mm -hmm. to to start it at. So I put some feelers out. I got a handful of people that signed up, and they I, they pretty much did this whole workshop where uh, they shot the bands. We did some product placement. Uh, we shot live, mostly studio, and uh, these guys are pretty good. And, and uh, cool. I also uh, uh, showcased it on my new, I have a TikTok uh, account at Mark Weiss Guy. So it has about 20 different posts, which are pretty old. They're pretty amusing. I had this kid, Zach, who, um, uh, who was an intern. Uh, he was my intern for this this. Um, this program and it turned into, you know, a real good, uh, good little, uh, partnership where, uh, we're, I'm helping him. He's helping me. And I just sent him on his first assignment with Zach wild with black label and anthrax. And, and, uh, there's going to be, a, there'd be like adventures. And I'm pretty much, uh, telling my story through that in between through the skips and TV interview I did. So um, there's little clips of that. It's just, it's, uh, it's a little bit different from my Facebook and my Instagram where I just kind of put, you know, uh, birthdays up and anniversaries. This is going to be a little bit more telling my story and trying to inspire some people to be photographers. Um, so it's pretty cool. I'm fun. It's fun stuff. Cool. So you're, you got something out later or just came, uh, just came out. Is it just came out or it's coming out? The keep uh, no, on rolling. Uh, oh, the, the Kevin Dubro book. Yeah. Yeah, that's gonna be out in uh, probably about six weeks. Is, is, six weeks. You can you can pre-order it. I have it right here. It's cool. a hardcover, and 
It's uh, I self-published it with my girlfriend, Mikkel. And it's pretty much, it, this is a, this is a story of Kevin's tenacity of how we became Quiet Riot, number one album, heavy metal band to go to number one. And this is through the, through the words and eyes from Missy Whitney, who is the fan club president in Dubrow and then into Metal Health, uh, the Metal Health uh, album. And it's her memoirs, some notes back and forth to Kevin. Uh, you know, these are notes from Kevin to her. How oh, cool. And then there's Rudy Sarzo did the forward and his mother actually did the afterward. Uh, I put some memories in there in the back. He was a really good friend of mine. And uh, just, you know, it's just fun stuff. Things that were in the, uh, you know, it's one of these books. And uh, it's the photography of Ron Sobel, who did all the Randy Rhodes early stuff in the locker room, the album cover from Japan. He was Kevin's best friend, so I got him on board, and then a lot of Mrs. photos, personal stuff, and then my stuff, my photographs when I started shooting them in 1983 at the US Festival, and then I wow. did the, I did the Bang Your Head uh, single sleeve uh, a few months after that. So that's when I started, you know, shooting them and being at their video shoots and you know, kind of taking them to the to ride the wave with them. Well, it's kind of cool. I mean, like you're you're bringing the, the photos toward the end. You know, you had your the fan club and the other guy, you know, putting it in, you know, um, Ron putting them from the beginning with Brandy, but like I said, then you've got yeah. your stuff toward the end. So that's kind of cool. It's almost like a, almost like a, like a time machine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, I ended with, uh, my memories where that's me and Kevin and then, oh, how cool. And that's me and Kevin at my wedding. He, uh, he actually, uh, came up and, uh, sang with Zach, wild and sebastian bach before they were even in the bands you know and wow. jam for about a half an hour so that was fun sounds wow. horrible <laughs> just kidding it was probably a terrible time no not even a memory there no. that's awesome man that's really <laughs> that cool. that is really cool that's really cool. cool has is there um before we got to wrap up pretty soon uh is there is there anybody that you haven't shot that you just that is on your like that's your on your list you're the person you want to shoot more than anything. I mean, I, I go back to the stones, I guess. It's okay. Like, you're still touring. I would, I would love to get on board with them. I yeah. Mean, and they've got a new, they've got, they got a new record out that just came out. Right. I think if I'm not mistaken, it's mm -hmm. either out now or it's know. coming out pretty I, soon. I don't know. The first new, new music in 18 years or something like that's what I've heard. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Heard that's Great. cool. So Mark, where are you, where are you out of? I'm in by the Jersey Shore. Oh, you're still in oh. Jersey. Okay, then. Yeah, so, north, north of Asbury. I didn't I, know if you got a California feel. Or no, <laughs> no, everyone, that in the 80s, I went over to the L.A. Everyone thought I was from L.A. because I was always there. Anytime there was a video <laughs> shoot or, or a band playing, I would always fly over there. Uh, but I'm based here. I lived in New York and had a few studios in New York in the 80s. And then I came back and, you know, raised a family. And I'm still, you know, down by the shore. That's cool. Uh, that's, nice. that's cool. You can get all the good concerts too. <laughs> we I live in a cornfield in Indiana. We don't we get we get <laughs> we have we to get, travel. We have to travel to go. I have to go to the, either Indy, Na Nashville, Louisville, or St. Louis. Yeah, I can't imagine. I, I'm in the middle of that. <laughs> but we were in Evansville. We're actually Evansville. Kiss was in Evansville. They played that more than actually tied it with um, Madison Square Garden in that book up till a certain point. Mm-hmm. And they tore it down. But anyway, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, the bad part. Was, yeah, that's a bad part. But anyway. Well, Mark, it was been it's been great, yes. man, having you for a few minutes. Thank you very much. We really appreciate it. So where um, do people go to yeah. promote to, to pick up these books or to pre-order or to get your older stuff? You know, where well, do we go? That, yeah, the decade that rocked, it's still still rocking, you know. So and then you can go to the decade that rock.com and you know, I sign them and I throw postcards in there and sometimes cool. prints. So there's a lot of different packages and same with the decade uh, decade that rocked. Uh you can get the Kevin Dubro book. I also have my gallery prints that you can, you know, click a link and it'll take you to some prints. But um I just you know encourage people to go to to at Mark Weiss guy on TikTok. And uh, if you don't have TikTok, I suggest uh, you check it out. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. Uh, 
I mean, there's a lot of stupid stuff, but it's pretty, there's a lot of cool stuff too. So uh, I just got to stay with the cool stuff and ignore the, the, <laughs> the weird stuff, you know, <laughs> but uh, it's, a, it's a, you know, it's another way to promote yourself and to, you know, share some things that you have to share with people. Yeah. That's cool. cool. Yeah. I've never seen anything weird on the internet. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> Not, no, I've never seen anything weird on TikTok either. Nothing. No, ever. I don't really do TikTok that much, but I'll have to check it out. I will. I will check it out. Yeah. I also post the same things on my Instagram and Facebook. So I kind of double it up. Okay. It starts out on TikTok and then I throw it on there. But, gotcha. you, you, but on the TikTok, you, you, you just get that adventure. You don't get all the other little things, you know, so you, you can just see, see a story at a time. Cool. Gotcha. Thanks for educating us on that. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't no really kidding. I'm old. <laughs> I'm old. Listen, I just got educated with this guy, Zach. And, and, and the reason how that happened was like a year ago, uh, he came up to me at the Monsters on the Mountain and wanted to be a rock photographer. And I gave him some tips. I said, you do this and do that. And then a month before this Monsters on the Mountain, where I had the workshop, uh, his dad called me up and said, you know, we're going to be there. But when, when, um, can we sign up until because i'm not sure if uh you know we're on vacation and with the family I'm not sure if it's in the budget yet so i said just let me know whenever and he goes yay I, I said so how's uh your son doing he goes oh he's doing good uh he's got this tiktok channel and he's got like six hundred and fifty thousand subscribers and <laughs> video. he's got a video that went viral 54 million i'm like and i'm thinking at this point i'm thinking Wait, in turn, maybe I'll do a little. So we we kind of made a deal and we kind of like put our adventures together on me creating this TikTok channel and him kind of in turn for me. And it, it worked out really good. And, and uh, you know, one of my first videos up there got 34,000, uh, uh, wow. you know, views. And wow. Uh, and <laughs> I'm putting on a lot of stuff. So, that, you know, it's so it's it's good. It's good. Uh and it, it was, a, lot, a lot of it's like of photographers learning uh, how to shape, take pictures. And you'll see all the behind the scenes uh, photo shoots with Queensryche, Kicks with Vixen. And these are these guys shooting them, you know. Uh, so there's about uh, probably like 15 bands that we shot. Wow. That's so, cool. I've checked that out. Yeah. yeah. The Monsters of the Mountain, that's down in Pigeon Forge, right? Mm-hmm. right it's uh in gallon yeah. it was in gallon yeah, Gatlin- gallonburg yeah. yeah yeah we uh i've been we're i'm only about five hours from there so we sometimes we'll go down there but um no that's cool as hell <laughs> all right man awesome. well thank you thank you very much for joining us we really appreciate it yeah it's, i'm glad you uh made a chance to talk i appreciate you uh spending the time and share and spreading the word yep we'll get it out oh, there we'll definitely check out the book so all right. All Thank right. You. All right. See you Bye. later. Bye, see guys. You. Bye. Bye. Welcome to the Ages of Rock podcast with your hosts, Bill Algy, Dennis Talbot, and Alan Tate. We are three guys who have one thing in common, a love of rock and roll. Our goal is to talk about all things rock. We hope you find this show intriguing, funny, and occasionally highly opinionated. Enjoy!